Hey everybody, here I'm going to showcase how we can take materials created in Substance and animate them here in Cinema 4D. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to our extensions and go to Substance Engine. In here we have the Substance Asset Manager. So this Asset Manager, we can drag and drop SBSARs into here and these can be created in any of the Substance Suite programs. All the parameters are down here in the bottom right hand corner and any exposed parameters, either created in Designer or Sampler, they can all be animated here in Cinema 4D. So you can see down here, I have a few of those parameters already keyframed um, here on my Properties menu. And all I've done is at keyframe zero, I have the material set to default. And we'll take a look at that in a second. And at the far right, at frame 150, I have them all saturated and all the color values shifted. So in this render, you can see what that looks like at, at keyframe 150. We have this nice vibrant color for our fabric here. And if we go ahead and we pause this render and we take a look at the state of the material at keyframe zero, you can see that all of our properties down here in the bottom right hand corner are back to what the original were when we imported in this fabric from our substance material. So we're gonna hit play on our render view here and we'll see that our material is now back to that more muted kind of natural color tone uh, version of that fabric. Cool, so we've got this effect looking good and again for reference for animating those materials any parameters down here in the bottom hand corner any of these options we can go ahead and keyframe animate them or we can use any of the other animation features in Cinema 4D itself um, so all of your material parameters can be animated. Um, so that's super handy. And just for a showcase here, let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like somewhere in between our timeline. So let's take a look at, at 75 here. We'll hit play on our render view. And you can see that um, we're not just going and swapping from like one state to another. The animation timeline here actually will transition from uh, you know one state to another. Then we'll get all the variations in between here. So we're getting this kind of uh, not quite vibrant, not quite saturated version of that material that we see at frame 150, uh, but we're getting that kind of middle state there. Cool. So now let's talk about the other effect that we have in that video. So that effect is actually controlled by a vertex map. Um, what we're going to be doing with this vertex map is we're going to be telling Substance here to use the vertex map as a reference between two material states or two different materials. I'm working on another series to explain why this works in more detail. Um, so check back for that video in the future. But for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the vertex map tag over here and click on this use fields option. So fields in Cinema 4D are a very, very powerful tool. Um, well, again, we'll explain why in a future video, but here we're just going to add in this linear field here. And you can see this linear field, what it's doing is it's controlling two different states of that vertex map here. So you can see the vertex map in the viewport here is shifted between that red and that yellow tones. And if we shift the field here, we can adjust that transition and the speed of that transition here um, a little bit more tightly. So what we're going to do is if we hit in our render view, we can see that that vertex map, while it's kind of a, being applied here on the viewport, it's not really doing too much. It's actually kind of adjusting maybe the metallic values here um, on a material, but we're not really getting too much of, you know, variation in the material itself. What we need to do though, is we need to take two materials and use the vertex map as a reference to blend them. So here what we're going to do is we're going to use a few different blend nodes to connect these two materials together and use that vertex map as a reference to blend between the two. Now, one thing to note is that with the current state of Redshift, the newer graph editor is missing some legacy features. So to get this current graph editor, and this is in Cinema 4D version 2023, we had to take the substance materials from the Substance Asset Manager and convert them into Redshift. When we do that conversion, we get the old graph manager back, and so we're able to reference some of these legacy nodes and legacy features. And as of this video and as of this recording, that's what we'll need to do to get this effect to work. So here I have that vertex attribute here. And I'm going to plug it into my blend color for both my blend material and blend displacement here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those two blends and we're going to output them into our surface and our displacement for our final view. Now, one last super important thing, 
that we need to do is we actually need to go and click on this vertex attribute here and we need to reference that vertex map here in the attribute name. If we don't do this, the vertex attribute doesn't know what it's referencing and it won't really do anything at all. So if we don't have that plugged in, we're not going to get this effect. But if we get it plugged in right, then we can see that we're getting that material transition to apply. And again, what's happening there is we're taking that vertex map. We're using that linear field to control the transition of those vertex colors and those vertex colors are what's driving this material transition. There's a bunch of other effects that we can do. We could actually do a shader field on top of the linear field to kind of get more um, unique kind of finishes, which you'll see in the video itself. But we're going to save that for a future video. If you'd like to see a full step-by-step -step of how I created this scene and the animation, please let me know and look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Thank you.